Hi everyone, Saint Man here. This video wasn't brought to you by any donations because I didn't get any for today. You can suggest a topic at the PayPal subscribe star or Bitcoin links down below. Today I'm going to discuss a post from the goingyourownway.com forum by someone named Edward, and I quote, The majority of Americans are overweight and lazy. However, for that 10 to 15% that start revolving a large part of their life around fitness and looking better, I found most of them super annoying. Most of the women in my local YMCA show up in ultra-tight spandex and sports bras, obviously craving attention. I asked about this on a city data forum, and one of the mods banned me for questioning her logic about needing to wear a sports bra to better see her form during certain exercises. These women wear the least amount of clothing possible and get on the stair climbing machine in front of everyone to get attention. The men are in on it too now. A lot are now wearing short shorts, and I've heard the phrase hoochie daddy shorts, and barely their tank tops. They prim flex and take video slash pictures in front of the mirrors. They use words like bro in every sentence. I'm old enough to remember when dudes showed up at the gym in whatever old clothing they had, and some old sneakers. Now it's more like a fashion show. These dudes obsess over consuming enough protein, not skipping leg days, and many now take steroids, all in the pursuit of female validation, if we cut through the BS. I'm not saying that staying fit is a bad thing. I go two to three times a week for 45 minutes. But the whole idea of thinking we need to work out to change our looks is annoying to me. I kind of feel sorry for the dudes that are at the gym five to six days a week for hours at a time. And for what? Functionally in every life, there is really only so much strength a person needs unless you're a pro athlete or someone looking for an advantage." Unquote. I didn't realize the gym has now gotten that bad that there are male prima donnas there in the 1970s style short shorts taking selfies in the mirrors while asking themselves, how you doing? Other people under that post commented that lately they've been going to the gym and it's 100% spandex sluts in full makeup and latte machines. One guy even wants to bring back the old school gyms that had heavy iron things that you pick up and down. Another guy complained that women at the gym are surrounded by perfume clouds to cover their odors. Yet if you go to a hair salon or store, they ask you to care about not wearing a scent because it might offend one of the other customers and have them get an anaphylactic shock. I haven't been to the gym in ages, and the gold gym in this area closed years ago. That place was predominantly a male-only space. Back in high school, it was called the weight room and girls would go in and get frustrated because the guys would be busy working out rather than paying attention to them. They would get bored after a day or two and never come back. It was dark, dingy, and smelled like the inside of a sock. There was no room to do yoga or stair aerobics that was in the main gym. All the fat guys would basically be down on the gym floor doing that instead. I would see them through the window. They would be there day after day for months sometimes, and somehow they were still fat. I couldn't figure that one out. I'll discuss more in a moment, but let me first tell everyone about today's sponsor, the Red Pill Ring. The Freemasons have their own rings, and now so do we. When another MGTOW sees your gold, silver, or bronze ring, he's going to know exactly what it means, and that both of you have the same value system. Now all we have to do is make a secret handshake. Please visit redpillring.com today to get your precious, precious ring. Do it fast before Gollum with boobs stops you. Anyways, now back to both men and women turning gyms into fashion shows so they can get attention and possibly pick someone up clown world show. In high school, our female gym teacher, we used to joke about how she was bangable so long as we put a paper bag over her head. Her body was a 9 or a 10, but she had the face of a 3. Those were mostly the guys that didn't work out. But the guys in the weight room, for the most part, would concentrate on gains and it was hilarious to watch all the guys who were basically going their own way there. There was a couple of exercise bikes and a Stairmaster in there too, but they were off to the side, and if you were on them, you weren't facing the rest of the weight room, but instead a blank wall. So women weren't able to see if anyone was looking at them if they were on them, and therefore weren't able to make eye contact with them men to get their daily dopamine rush from guys staring at them. Besides, most guys were busy paying attention to the 200 to 300 pounds they were bench pressing so that it didn't kill them. If you want to keep women out of a mostly male gym, then just use weights and heavy machines. Make the minimum weight 15 to 20 pounds, and that makes the machines useless for them. It doesn't even need to be that big of a space either. While growing up, there were a couple girls that would actually hang out in the weight room, as female chameleons, to get and keep their muscle-bound boyfriends. But those were only one or two of them. Funny enough, the weight room was also a place I was least likely to get picked on when I first started. 
I received encouragement for coming back and doing 10 and then 15 pounds on hamstring exercises. There was no competition that I could see. And we were all trading tips and trying to help each other self-improve. That doesn't sound like the YMCA that Edward goes to. I'm not sure if the Y is still a gay-friendly place like it was in the 1970s, when the village people were singing all about it. That would explain why many of those guys were in tiny, tight outfits there. I can understand both men and women obsessing over their looks because we're in an attention-based economy. Anything that gives you the edge, be it bigger muscles or tighter clothing, most people are going to use. There's also the sexual teasing aspect of working out. For example, if you're really into it, then you'll get a red flush face. You'll be sweating, moaning, and even grunting. That simulates a lot of the smells, sounds, and positions of sex without actually doing it. Throw in revealing clothing and it's erotic experience to some extent. As for Edward being banned from a forum for simply asking a question about why women need to wear such tight revealing clothing, it seems that men aren't even allowed to criticize anything women do these days. Yet they're allowed to criticize everything we do. Of course, even pointing that out will probably get you banned by a moderator somewhere. Back in the 1980s and 90s, if women wanted to be seen working out, they would have to go out for cross-country teams in my high school or runners groups. But it was mostly a bunch of beanpole guys that were in there too. The home gym is a solution to help you basically go your own way from fitness clubs and YMCAs. You can do push-ups and crunches each day while also watching television. Also, it might take you 20 minutes to get to the gym and another 20 minutes to get back. And that's all the time you need to finish a complete workout at home. Not to mention the gas prices, gym membership fees, etc. A lot of gym memberships also have sneaky terms and conditions, and you have to sign up for a year, and it can be a nightmare to break the contract. The gym is also potentially me too trap for men. Guys also usually work out to accomplish something. When we're there, we're usually goal-oriented instead of horror-oriented. But women that wear revealing clothing are just waiting for the wrong man to look at them and pow, she's going to complain to the gym that she was sexually harassed. Gyms should be full of heavy metal weights for guys named Jim. Instead of places full of yoga and Pilates for Jane where she can show off her Lululemon hot pants. All men have to do is stop looking at women in the gym and that thought will be gone. Just like the guys in the high school weight room did the same. Remember weights can be dangerous if you don't have a spotter. Remember women hate dangerous and dirty places. The weight room was dark, dirty, and there was rock music blaring from the ceilings. Not the sort of place a woman would feel comfortable. If you start a small gym, make it look like a body shop for cars, and play music too loud to speak to, and lower the lighting. Then women won't be seen, heard, and won't feel comfortable being there. Plus put the girly bikes and machines in a place where women can't see if guys are looking at them, and your problem is solved. Or you can put those wimpy machines facing a window so that people from the outside can see the women, so even if men on the outside are staring and harassing them through the windows, it's going to make women feel uncomfortable. But funny enough, they don't have the problem with the guys in the gym looking at them because they have the power to throw them out if they look at them and make them feel uncomfortable. Sure, someone might actually like the attention from creepers through the window. But the point is, most won't. And most won't feel safe with potential peepers and creepers looking at them. Women will complain, but it's your gym and you can pretty much keep the equipment where you like it. The idea is not necessarily to cater to women, but still invite them in, but make them feel uncomfortable enough in a passive-aggressive way so they walk themselves out the door. That way your gym will get the hardcore guys that want to build muscle and the women won't be there. Or if they do show up, they won't be there for very long. Maybe put some offensive graffiti on the wall that will offend feminists. Maybe something patriotic because that'll offend the libtards out there too from coming into your establishment. Maybe also sprinkle a MAGA hat or two behind the counter. You'll get more conservatives supporting you and less lip tarts. You know where all this scantily clad stuff is heading. Eventually, nudity will be commonplace almost everywhere. We've also seen the rise of things like naked yoga lately. Many cities are adding new beaches, and of course, only fans has taken off. It's hilarious because women want attention from people at the gym, but more people than ever are on their phones everywhere. That's why more people than ever are taking their selfies at the gym because people in real life aren't looking at them there but they're looking at them online. So expect more people than ever to take selfies for attention at the gym. It's like you don't exist unless you're online these days. So if the social platforms don't like your politics and get rid of you, then people won't look at you in real life and online. That'll mess heavily with your psychological health and self-esteem. Corporations have now become the gatekeepers of dopamine-based attention and self-esteem, even at the gym, it seems. But I found that there are different types of online attention. 
those types that give you a purpose and those that don't. For example, this channel gives me a dopamine rush while simultaneously giving me a purpose. If it was me just doing something for the sake of attention, it wouldn't be anywhere near as fulfilling because the people would be mostly brain dead that listen here. Anyways, that's it for today. Don't forget to smash the like button the way that girls used to head up to my high school weight room to get the attention of guys that they wanted to smash. But those guys were busier banging barbells. Bang the bell and check out the mystery link. Follow me on BitChute, Twitter, and Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Subscribe to me on Minds, Odyssey, and MGTOW.TV to get the video for the day after tomorrow. This channel's been demonetized. And if you want to help me keep making content, then please support me through Subscribestar. There's a link to it in the description. Or you can do an hour-long coaching chat with the Sandman for $45. US And I won't rush you out the door like a cheap whore. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the losers that wear as little as possible to the gym so that men will stare at them and so they can report said men to the club owners away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.